the pages. If you need to, there are bathrooms out by the door that you walked in. In case of an emergency, please find an exit that has a green exit sign over the top. And we ask that your phones are on silent, please. Feel free to take photos of your own children, but we do require silent. We will begin very shortly. Thank you very much. looking at the animal books. Did you know that a giraffe doesn't see the same spots as another giraffe? It's like a fingerprint. Wow, I didn't know that. I like reading books that are full of imagination and mystery. I sometimes feel like I'm in this book solving the clues. I like reading picture books. They, I read them to my family and some of those books help me with how I'm feeling. It really can explain a lot if you really focus on the message. Picture books are really good for that. Which ones have helped you the most? These ones, like this one, the very hungry caterpillar. It may just seem like it's a hungry caterpillar, but these a bigger message of hope. Can we read it? Yes, of course. A little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up, and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. He started to look for some food. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears. But he was still hungry. He started to look for some food. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums. But he was still hungry. He started to look for some food. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries. But he was still hungry. He started to look for some more food. On Friday, he ate through five oranges. But he was still hungry. He started to look for some food. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of... One lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomachache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built himself a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. You're right. There 
is a message of hope and how you can grow into something beautiful. Oh, I remember this book. My mum used to read this to me when I was younger. Have you heard of this one? No, we haven't. I'll read it to you. Would you like that? Okay, here we go. I feel silly. I feel angry. I feel curious. I feel sad. I feel excited. I feel scared. I feel happy. I feel frustrated. I feel shy. I feel confused. I feel loved. We all feel lots of different emotions. When emotions get too big, we can blow them away. Take a deep breath into your tummy. One, two, three. Then slowly breathe out. One, two, three. You're right. That is a good one. I should read that to my mummy and dad hasn't done the dishes. What other ones have we got here? Oh, let it flow. I wonder what this could be about. Oh, I know. It gives lots of ideas of what we can do when we are having big emotions. How we can regulate ourselves back to calm. Well, let's have a look at some of the pages and see what we can try.
I think I'll try to tap it out activity. It might help me when I'm feeling angry because mum said I had to eat my vegetables. Black. There's one more here. Aro Hasway. This looks interesting. Do, do we have time for one more? I really like listening to stories, especially when I don't have to read them. Yes, I think there's just enough time. You ready? Ready. Aroha's way. I know a child called Aroha, warm of heart, broad of smile, dark of hair, wild as wind from the great southern isle. She runs through the long grass, skips in the leaves, that walks with the wind through the bare autumn trees. She'll sing and she'll dance and she'll hug and she'll play, for that is Aroha's way. But now and then, Aroha feels trouble. All alone, small and meek, sometimes frozen with fear, too frightened to speak. When her belly tumbles with butterfly wings, or she's held fast when she stands by invisible strings. What that little voice whispers, Aroha's no good. Or another voice whispers, she shouldn't or should. Aroha knows what to do. She runs and jumps, she tumbles and spins, so those butterflies quiet their fluttery wings. Then she'll breathe deep down, as deep as she can, and blow away those strings, holding her fast where she stands. And when that voice comes whispering, Aroha's no good, she'll feel the cold air, crisp leaves under her foot, the sound of birds singing, the wind through the woods, <coughs> She'll listen, she'll feel, close her eyes, give a smile, and the voice will grow quiet for a while. And if that boy says that she shouldn't or should, because she's stuck at the fork of the road through the woods, she'll share her trouble, she'll talk, she'll find a way home, for Aroha is never alone. Are you okay? Yeah, I guess so. We were just playing and I wish I was like my friends. They're so much better than soccer than I am. And my friends are better at drawing than me. I'm only good at drawing stick people. I felt like that too when you when I was your age, but you'll be good at lots of different things that your friends are. I wanted to be a rugby player, but I couldn't catch the high balls. But I was a fast runner, so I started playing rugby. But don't you want to be like your friends? I thought that, but I knew it was better to be myself and use the skills I already have. There's a couple of books in the library that we can read together to help. I can read them to you now. Oh yes, please. Well, here's the first one. It's called Odd Dog Out. Busy dogs, a busy day, a busy work, and busy play. Swimmer, sailor, soldier, scout. They all blend in, no dog stands out. But when I look closer, can you see one dog behaving differently? 
Someone on this busy street is dancing to a different beat. When they fly high, the stock flies low. When they say that, the stock says low. It's very sad, King Violin, but this small dog does not fit. It's true, I've tried my best, but I'm the man like all the rest. That's why I made my mind to leave this time my home behind. On her own and out of place, she sighs a sigh and packs her case. She walks so she can walk no more. Is this the place she's looking for? What was my bow wow? Can it be a hundred others just like me? I play guitar, I ride my bike. I think riding my all alike. But when I look closer, can you see one dog behaving differently? Somebody this afternoon is listening to a different tune. Here's something she knows all about, classic case of. Poor thing I feel for you, I was once an outside too. I really feel like I am, and I love to stand up for my crown. So should you. Central Hello, Tao begins to wag. She smiles a smile and grabs her back. The busy dog's a busy day, but look who's back. <laughs> They cheer, they clap, they whoop, they shout. We've really missed our old dog out. He made us all appreciate the big difference really great. It's true, look closer. Can you see my dogs behaving differently? Each one a doggy superstar, so blaze a trail. Be who you I think it's good that we are different. I like that I can be good at things that, that are different from my friends. We can learn from each other and have lots of fun. That's right. It just reminded me of a different book. Have you heard of The Day the Crowns Quit? This used to be my favourite book. Yes, I love that story too. But how is that about being ourselves? Well, it's more about knowing you're able to do things that you might not think you can and not just doing what people think you can do, but being different and trying new things. I think I get it, but let's read the book just in case. It's me, Red Clown. We need to talk. You make me look kind of any other colour. All you long, I wear myself of colouring fire trucks and apples and strawberry. I even walk colouring holidays with stutters and hearts. I need a rest, your other friend. I love that I'm my go-to crown for grapes, dragons and wizard hats, but it makes me crazy that so much of my gorgeous clothes were outside the lines. 
If you don't start colouring inside of the lights, I am going to completely lose it, your very neat friend. Duncan, it, I hate being used to draw the outlines of things, things that are coloured in by other colours, all of which think they are brighter than me. It's not fair when you use me to draw a nice ball and fill the ball in with all the other colours. How about a black beach will sometime? Is that too much to ask your friend? Black As a green crown, I like my work. Lots of crocodiles, trees, dinosaurs and frogs. I have no problem with the green crush I like you on a colour friend's career so far. You happy friend? Green crayon! Oceans, lakes, rivers, rain clouds, rain drops, and clear skies. But the bad news is I'm. But the bad news is I'm so sure and stubby. I can't even see off the rain in the crown box anymore. <laughs> I need to be your ready to be thin blue crayon. It's important to our strength. We can all be rainbow crowns. You can't throw it on the ground, that's littering. It's one little piece of rubbish, someone at the house will pick it up. But you put it on the ground, no one else should have to tie it up after you. Mum, I'm my room all the time. Hey guys, what's going on? We're talking about littering, she just threw rubbish on the ground and won't pick it up. Oh, it's important to put our rubbish in the right bin. Why? Because what if everyone put their rubbish, there would be rubbish everywhere. I actually know of a book in the library that this is all about. Would you like to come with me and read it? I think that's a great idea.
So I actions have an effect on other people. Maybe I should clean my own room then. Sorry, Mum. That might be a good start. But yes, our actions have an effect on others, our environment and ourselves. We can even shape a future from our actions. How would we do that? We aren't in the future. I know, but say if we lit it all the time, there would eventually be rubbish everywhere. Oh, that's true. Did you know that our actions are also superpowers? You're telling me I can be invisible, flying, super speed? Not quite. One of me that our superpower could be listening to someone or breathing to make us feel calm. They don't sound like superpowers. Yeah, we breathe all the time. How can breathing be a superpower? I have the perfect book all about superpowers. Here, let's breathe. Every single day, through the minutes and the hours, there's always a time to use my superpowers. I want to stack my blocks up high to make a tower to the sky. It starts to wobble, then begins to tip. I reach to catch him, but the pieces slip. I feel so mad as I fall to the floor that I don't want to try anymore. But if I think a bit harder and try a bit longer, I can stack a different way so they stand a bit stronger. I'm proud of my resilience. I stand tall like a tower. I think I really like the super power. I take a puzzle down off the shelf. I want to try doing it all by myself. There are lots of pieces and I can't make them fit. Frustration is rising. I don't like it one bit. Then somebody asks me if they can help out. So we take it in turns to what do have some down. But pieces by pieces I began to discover the bigger picture when we help each other. I lend a hand too because teamwork is fun. And two superpowers are better than one. <coughs> Some places are noisy, it all gets too much. I feel overwhelmed and bit out of touch. When my brain feels busy and my face feels hot, I know I need to go and find a quiet spot. I take a deep breath and let out slow. This helps me feel grounded, this helps me let go. I might hold my shoulders I count one to ten. When I smooth my mind, I feel calm again. Self-regulation gets me back in the zone. I'm composing capable. I can do this on my own. These are our superpowers. What are your superpowers? As long as you use our powers for good though, right? Oh yes, of course. If we used our superpowers for just ourselves and didn't look out for other people and teach them about the superpowers, we wouldn't be very good friends and would be quite selfish. What does selfish mean? It's when, you, it's when you only think of yourself and not other people. That is mean. That's not being a good hyper learner. No, it's not. Have you read the book The Giving Tree? Well, let's read it now. Every day the boy would come and play. No. 
and instead of holies and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches and when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade and the boy loved the tree very much. And time, and the tree was happy but time went by and the boy grew older and the tree was often alone. Come boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I am too big to climb. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I am sorry boy, but I have no money. I only have leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. I need a house. Can you give me a house? I am sorry, boy. <laughs> but the forest is my house. Cut down my branches and build a house. And then you will be happy. I want a bite. Can you give me a bite? Can't stay on my trunk and build a boat. And you can sail away and be happy. Get it. 
just made me rethink everything. I know what you mean. I think we have time for one more story before we have to leave the library. What about this one? All right, here we go.
on the road where you have so much in common. It's why we're really good friends. Do you know what I'm talking about? Winter friend class is right, and my teacher told us that it is important to listen to your friend and they will listen <coughs> to you. I do love listening to your stories. And I love listening to yours. Can I read this to you? I'm practicing my reading, and I know you're going to help me when I'm going to be a good friend and help me when I get stuck. Of course. This is George. He is a giant. He is the scruffiest giant in town. He always wears the same old patched up gown. I was wasn't the scruffiest giant in town. One day he saw a shop. He bought a smart shirt, a smart pair of trousers, a smart belt, a stripy tie, some socks and a pair of shiny black shoes. Now I'm the smartest giant in town. When he was going home, he heard a noise. It was giraffe. What's the matter, giraffe? It's my neck. It's cold and I need a scarf. Cheer up. I'll give you my top. <laughs> George then came to a river on a boat with two sad goats. What? What? What's the matter, goats? And I sail. A blood on the storm. We need a last no sail. Cheer up. I'll give you my cheer up. I'll give you my shirt. George then came to a family of mice squeaking. What's the matter, mice? It's a house. It's a house. It broke down. We wish we had a nice house. Cheer up. I'll give you my shoe. George came to a campsite where there was a fox crying. What's the matter, fox? It's my sleeping bag. Yes. I wish I had a warm little sleeping bag. It fell in a puddle. Cheer up. I'll give you my sock. George then came to a squelchy bog. Beside, there were some dogs howling. What's the matter, dogs? It's this bog, you can't cross me. Cheer up, I'll give you my belt. Scarf 
four pound <coughs> giraffe, a shirt on a bar with a say four goats. One of my sh my shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bit for a fox. My belt holds a dog who is crossing the bog. But now I'm the coldest giant in town. George was now sad and did not feel at all smart. So he went back to the shop to buy some new clothes. But when he got to the shop, it was closed. He found his old clothes and put them on. And George felt much better. When he was going home, he met all the animals that he had helped. And they had a present for George. In the jingle jangle jungle on a cold and rainy day, nine little friends found the perfect place to play. Moose had marvellous antlers and lion a golden mane. Zebra had fantastic stripes and sheep while sheep was playing. None of them had noticed that someone else was there. Sleeping in that cave was a very cranky bear. <laughs> Went the cranky bear. Roar, roar, roar. He gnashed his teeth and stomped his feet and chased them out the door. So in the jingle jangle jungle on a cold and rainy day, nine little friends had nowhere warm to play. So Zebra fetched a tin of mud and lime, some grass of gold. Moose got two big branches and sheep, <coughs> while sheep got cold. Sheep was getting worried. <coughs> and then from in the cave, there came a very cranky... <coughs> Zebra, Lion and Moose ran out and Bear was right behind them. They hid behind the bushes where they hoped he wouldn't find them. As Bear stormed back inside the cave, he turned and roared at Sheep. All I really want is a quiet place to sleep! 
So they fetched a pair of clippers and they clipped off half their wool. They stuffed it in a cotton bag until the bag was full. Oh, thank you very much. Said Bjerg, soon he fell asleep. Maybe he was dreaming of a plain but thoughtful sheep. The witch had a hat and a long ginger plait, and how the cat purred as they flew through the wind. But how the witch wailed when the wind blew so wildly it blew off the hat. Oh no, my hat, down we go. They searched for the hat, but no hat was found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with a hat in its hands. He handed it over politely, then eagerly said, I'm a dog. You have to be. Is there room in a broom for a dog like me? Yes. Over the fields and forests they flew. The witch held the hat. But away blew the bow from her plaid. They searched for the bow, but no bow was found. A bird jumped out from in the trees and severed the screech. I am a bird, as green as can be. Is there any room on the roof for a bird like me? Yes, definitely. Over the reeds and rivers they flew. The bird shrieked with glee and the stormy wind blew. The witch clutched her bow, but let go of her wand. Down! They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Then all of a sudden, from out of a pond, leapt a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely, then said with a croak, I'm a frog, as clean as can be. Is there any room on the boat for a frog like me? Yes, of course. Over the moors and mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy, and the broom snapped in two. Down they fell into a bog, and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. A dragon appeared from behind the clouds. I'm a dragon, as mean as can be. Did I play to a witch and chest my tea? The witch screamed as she flew higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help! The witch cried as she flew to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon flew closer, and licking his lips, he said, Maybe just this much the witch without chips. But just as he planned to begin on his face, from out of a ditch rose a horrible beast. The creature had four frightful heads, and it, it dripped in its squelchous way to the dragon and said, Fire's off! Yes, my witch! Um, I'm sorry, I seem to have made a mistake. It's not to me, but now I must fly. Why So the frog found a lily, the cat found a cone, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone. And out of the cauldron rose a truly magnificent broom. It had seeds for the witch and the cat and the dog, a shower for the for the frog and a nest for the bird. They all clambered on, and with a tap of the broomstick, whoosh, they were gone. They all lived happily ever after, that you. I do like that story. It's got a great message, all about lending a hand and including others. So what's this one about? It's just called Kind. That could be about lots of things. Well, I think we have time for one last story, but then we get it. Better get back to class. What do you say? Yes, thank you for sitting with me. I don't feel so lonely anymore. Of course, you can always come and find me if you're ever
Imagine a world where everyone is kind. How can we make that come true? Here are some places we could start. Just give one small. We can listen to others when they feel sad. We can give hugs when feeling lonely. We can offer to hold someone's hand when they feel worried and frightened. We can offer help to others if they are in a pickle. Tell us to, tell us to, to share our friends up. We must make sure no one is left out when we are playing a game and that everyone is cared for. What else can you do to be kind to them? It's very kind to be patient. Animals need lots of kindness too. We are all good at different things, so let's give everyone a chance to shine. Sometimes extra kindness is needed. Such as when we meet new people, help to make them feel at home. If they are trying to learn our new language, perhaps you could tell them new words, and you can learn words of that language too. Look at all the ways we can say hello. Sometimes people live through hard times leaving their homes and countries behind. They are brave and amazing people. It's important to make sure that it's important to make them feel welcome in their new space and home. There might be one of the fridges around the corner. Everyone is valuable and we all have gifts to share. Let's be curious about the world and the other people in the world. It's fun to it's fun to to see what we do differently and what we do the same. It feels nice to be kind, it's a good idea too, because if everyone's kind, we'll make a better Thank you again for sitting with me. Not hoping, Winter.